Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Monday, it's March 8th. This will be our chart listing for the day. And just a reminder, uh, if you didn't hear me last week, I'm going to be leaving. Uh, there won't be any chart lessons on Thursday this week. Uh, I'm going to take Thursday and Friday off. I'm going to take a long weekend. I'm taking a little vacation, weekend, long weekend vacation. So uh, just wanted to give you a heads up. Well, if you're looking for a chart lesson on Thursday, there won't be one. Of course, we don't do one on Friday at all. So uh, be a short week this week, uh, today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. And uh, then I'll be out and out of pocket until the following Monday. So just mark that on your calendar. Uh, don't expect a chart lesson on uh, Thursday this week. But anyway, let's uh, let's get to the lesson. It's going to be a short one this uh, today. Uh, today was really kind of a range day. It looks like top in action here again on this correction. Notice where we pulled back and test the little uh, previous support across here and kind of turned down. Uh, it's about a 50% correction from the entire move down. So it wouldn't surprise me now to get a move back lower. We did close above the midline on the previous range here. And we did close above the midline as well again today. But uh, if you look at the bar here, it looks kind of like a reversal or topping action. However, if you go to the uh, 2000 tick chart, it looks more like a range type day. So it's really hard to say if... Um, where we'll go from here, but this does look kind of like a topping action on the daily chart. So we could start another leg down here. Maybe we'll get another leg similar to this first move down. I don't know. Maybe we'll just come down and retest the lows. We'll have to see. Um, it really just looks like on the big picture, we're just kind of sideways here. Notice how we're below the midline, above it, below it, above it below it that's that's sideways action so in the bigger picture we've been kind of working sideways here for a while and that may be what continues to happen so we'll just have to see where we go from here but uh, there's a look at it on the daily chart let's flip over to the 2000 tick chart you can take a look there and again it looks more like a range day there although we did close on the lower portion of the range so um, let's flip over to and here it is, and you can see we were clearly in this range early on, and we broke out, made a measured move, pretty much based on the width of the range. And then we trended down uh, and kind of closed back in the middle of the original range. So um, there's a spike in channel up, and then a real steep channel down that kind of turned into a little flatter channel, and then we just kind of chopped around into the close. Um, it looked like for a little bit we were going to get some more momentum today. It looks like we had a slight overshoot up here. Maybe it was more like this. That's the way I originally had it. it tends, the prices tend to fit really well there. So it looks like we had an overshoot. Um, moved to a new high. And then we came down. And now we had a break. Usually those overshoots lead to a break not soon after. And uh, we couldn't even make a new high. But that's maybe because it's a range day. And so really, in the big picture, your, your range day is probably more like this right here. And then you can kind of see this was all midline kind of stuff in here is the reason we were finding that uh, mixed trading around the top of that line and came back same thing. And uh, then we moved on down and closed in the lower half. So that's that's pretty much what we're looking at right there. And the way I got to that really was early on I played this range. Uh, I think I had it more like this right here. And you can see we made a perfect measured move up when we broke through there, turned down, closed back in the middle of the original range there. So that's how I got to that. Not a lot of trades early today. We had these big momentum moves, but there weren't really any good setups for them. So uh, we had a few trades late in the afternoon, and that was it. It just really kind of a weak trading day. Um, there just weren't any really good setups. It's really it's dangerous to go long into this stuff here. You need to get a few tests on the upside. Uh, you're better off looking for the failures here. And, there's, and you possibly could have taken a couple of these shorts, treating it like a failure. I didn't mark them because they're really chopping sideways there and we're kind of hanging them. <laughs> Excuse me. 
I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh, seems like we're kind of hanging mostly above the EMA there uh, with a little bit. And you can see the EMA is kind of pointing up still. So it was a little, really hard to tell. You had kind of an, even though we were look like we we're in a range here, you had a little upward momentum and you had to be careful going short here. So that's um, that's why you don't see a lot of shorts here. But there's a couple. You, you probably could have uh, maybe taken this short if you wanted to be a little aggressive and uh, maybe even that one. Um, both of them would have worked and they both have good signal bars on a failed brake hire. This one was actually a double top, so maybe a little maybe even a little safer than this one. But here we have the trend up, break, and new high. Uh, and then we turn down. The problem with this one, I don't think you could have got in it anyway. It just kind of, this thing dropped in just a few seconds, if I remember right, um, if this is where it was. That was at 8.45.38, 8.46, 8.46. See, all that happened within a minute. When that thing turned out, it just dropped. So I don't know if you could have got in that, but if you could have, that would have been a nice little ride down. And then prices hit this, started chopping sideways. Of course, draw your trend line, and then we came back to it here, and then we went higher. So it was really hard to probably trade that. But anyway... Uh, 7 o'clock came just as we're coming up through here. People always ask me when you can start trading. You can safely start trading this market around 6.30, definitely by 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. I usually try to start around Central uh, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. So you, you're pretty safe to trade then. And then of course, when 8.30 hits, which is right here where this gray line starts, um, that's the open of the... New York markets and the stock market and so forth. And that's when things really start rolling. So that's why we mark that off. And this is what we call regular hours. Used to, there was the market closed and opened like that at those times. But nowadays, it doesn't do that anymore. Uh, we, we mostly have 24-hour trading on all this stuff. But these times are still important. And I still watch them. And I still try to trade them. Uh, and I still mark them different. I, I like it to turn white about 8.30 just so I know when we're into regular trading hours and then I have it turn gray again around 2.30, which is kind of my cutoff time. Because you can see not much happens out here afterwards. And you don't want to take a trade out here and get stuck in this and just chop along and then have to exit with a loss or whatever. So it's just you're better off to be out by 2.30. doesn't mean that sometimes you can't get a huge move uh, after 2.30 because it does happen. But uh, for the most part, you can see there's not much volume or anything out here. It's just kind of the market just kind of dies. Uh, now, if you're managing a runner or something like that, feel free to do that because sometimes you do get some moves. But I just wouldn't enter any new trades after 2.30. So, all right, let's get back to the chart. Listen here. Uh, 7 o'clock comes right up through here. Uh, nothing really going on here until we finally get a break and you get, you're moving down. You get a close outside it and you low and then we turn up. We were kind of working sideways here. You can see the little congested sideways range. So maybe you take that as a failed breakout. It's a nice signal bar. Let me zoom in here a little more. Uh, you probably ride that back to the top at a minimum. That turns out to be a pretty nice trade. So if you took that one, it's a, it's a nice setup. Green arrow should be right there. And I will tend to like these. I talk about these a lot. This often turns out to be an important uh, low or high for the day or at least for a while, for a few hours and you can see that would have caught the low of this move before we headed higher and this is you can see this is not a real steep strong trend uh, we did get it did get some momentum going because notice how we shot up into the upper two uh, upper half and we stayed up there for a while that's showing some momentum uh, but at this point this still kind of looks like we're probably trying to make a measured move based on the width of the range and you can see once we did that it was downhill after that so Anyway, uh, you may take that trade and we run up and we get that little failed breakout. This should be just a tad higher here. And then we come back underneath and test it again and you get a second entry short with a nice signal bar way away from the EMA. I like that one. And then suddenly you get a double test here and go higher. And I mark this one green. Normally that signal bar wouldn't be good enough on a second entry, but notice too you got a new low and you try to go short once twice so it's not only a second entry long it's a failed second entry short so prices will probably at least come back and test these highs again um, which it does and then you actually get a triple test here 
Um, I didn't like going short there because we made a high, a lower high, and another lower high. Even though they're all turning down similar, they're not exactly the same place. Plus, you looks like we may have a little trend channel working up, so I would sit tight on that one. I think it would have worked if you took it, but I don't think it's worth risking. Uh, because you see we did push higher, and then finally we get a break of this cyan-colored channel, move to a new high, and then a big bearish bar. But again, we talked about that. It's like... It, the selling came pouring in, and man, that thing dropped in just a few seconds. A minute, all that happened in a minute or so, and then you can see the buying kind of comes back in, and the selling, and we try it again, and it fails again. Um, there's really a triple test across there, and another nice signal bar. Uh, the reason I didn't like making this one red is because you got to be concerned about that trend line. There's enough room to get out there, and prices may not even confirm that trend line they might shoot straight on through it but there's you got to be concerned about it because it's there and it hadn't been proven to not be valid at this point so um but still maybe you take that trade and then it bounces right off the trend line again a couple of times there's actually a second entry here but that looks too sideways and this is really your signal bar down here so it doesn't set up for a good trade but notice what happens you have a new low here and you get a first entry and then a second entry. So if it breaks higher there, it's a failure. So maybe you take that and go long right there. Plus you get a couple of tests. Uh, notice how you tested once, twice. The previous uh, resistance and it acted support is like a double test. So there's another reason to maybe consider that. And this thing rockets straight on up. And then it pulls back and tests the midline a couple of times. And then continues higher again. Normally I, I'd look to get long on a bunch of tests like that but that's just too sideways there's too big a chance you're in some kind of range or something there so I was a little wary of it and I think it's a little risky uh, we do get a little breakout pull back but it's right into the previous high and those are just risky period uh, you want to see it test out a few times you just don't get it there and it runs up Fails pretty quickly, comes back. There's another second entry right there, but again, no signal bar. If you had a good signal bar, maybe you take that trade bouncing right off the midline since we've bounced off of it the last few times. But notice we try to go higher, or we can't, we push up a little bit, and we get a one, two, three, we get a triple test right there with a decent signal bar, and again, right off the midline. And there's a little hidden second entry there, too. I like that one. It took it a minute to take off, but it does work. And this is where I think we get the overshoot. And then it pulls back, of course. And again, it looks like it's going to bounce off the midline. But here, you got too much resistance and you got a downtrend channel after an overshoot. So, uh, if anything, you're thinking short here. But again, it just looks too congested and we're in an uptrend overall. So, I don't think you want to go short there. Uh, I think you got to wait and see if you get something from underneath the mid. Uh, that midline running up to there and it just rockets right back up bounces off the midline tries to go higher again and kind of makes that measured move and then the bottom falls out of it again but again no short up here it's really no chance you might consider going short there uh but that's i just you know you've moved a long way and it's not much of a correction Sure, it could continue down to the trend line or even just keep going straight down, but I don't think it's worth risking. I think you want to wait and see if you get something off this trend line again, which you do, but again, it's too congested. And that's the first close really outside this channel coming down. Uh, and it ends up just giving you a second entry short. And that's tempting to go short. And I kind of like that in real time. But there's a big chance that thing turns down, goes a few ticks, and then turns back up. So, um, it, it, really, you got a triple test across there. And it is a second entry short. So, maybe you take that trade uh, after the overshoot here. Because generally, that overshoot's going to lead to a break pretty soon thereafter. And the fact that we didn't keep going there and it, it turned back down, that's not a good sign. That's not really a good sign at all. So, but it, you finally get the break, and you get a first entry, and then a second entry, and you get a little room back to the EMA, and you're probably going to at least try to retest this high, even if you don't make it. There's a good chance you might. You probably will make it. 
And so I like going long there. And then, of course, you get the reversal right here. So if it breaks higher, um, the only reason I didn't make that one blue is because the next bar didn't break higher. And so now it looks congested again. So still, maybe worth taking. Uh, I just wasn't crazy about anything else going long there when it didn't take off. Uh, and you can see my thinking was correct because in a few minutes, this thing is rocketing lower. And unfortunately, there's no setup to get short. It just, the bottom, it just keeps going. Then we're chopping sideways. Um, breaks out of there and we finally work back over here and then make a lower high and confirm our trend line all in one move right there. Uh, so I like going short right there. It takes it a minute, but it drops on down. And then you get another second entry right here. Um, normally, I would tell you to to wait and use the... This bar is too big to go short below. But you could go short right here because it's a first entry, second entry that fails right at the key entry point. So I like that one to go short below that green bar. Uh, you might consider going short over here, but it's right into all those all those lows right there. So I think it's a little dangerous. It would have worked, but I don't think I would risk it. If I didn't notice, if I didn't see the failure here, um, I probably would not go short there. I just sit tight. And then we finally get the break. Notice a little trend working up. You get a close outside new high and then it breaks higher and fails and turns down. I like trading this one on the engulfing bar because you're probably going to retest this low. And you can see we ended up going much lower than that, but it really struggled to push through there. So, but it runs over here and you get a first entry and then a second entry short right there. And that confirms, pretty much confirms that trend line too. So I like that trade. Turns out to be a pretty nice trade. You might look at that as a failed second entry long, but look at all that support across there. You can't go short below that. I think it would have worked, but it's just not worth risking. Then you run up, get a break, and you move to a new low. And then it kind of rallies out of there and just goes sideways. I don't see anything else out here this late in the day that's really worth risking before 2.30. And so I believe this was your last trade of the day. And, yeah, just not a lot of trades today, especially this morning. We got some good moves, but we just didn't get the setups. There were a couple of them in there that maybe if your setup was a little, your signal bar was okay, maybe you could take it. But for such a nice, for a spike in channel and a lot of momentum up here at the same time, it was kind of a disappointing morning. So if you felt like it was hard to find a trade, it's because it was. There just weren't a lot of setups. Uh, a lot of green ones in there, but you got to be really careful with them because uh, they can trip you up. So I prefer to stick to the sure things. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, there's just not much else you can say about today. It's just a range day. It started out as a tight range. It turned, what it turns out is that's a midline, and it's just a larger range day. And there it is. And we spent a lot of time right in the middle of that range, but um, we tested the highs, couldn't go much higher. And then we trended lower thereafter and closed in the very near the lows for the most part. We didn't quite get back down there, but this was a pretty bearish move down. So anyway, that's how I saw it for the day. I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you had a good trading day today. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow. Um, I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.